So I'm just popping in the comments uh, my socials so that you can go and follow them if you want to. It's obviously written on the screen as well so you can see all my Instagram, my Facebook, TikTok, um, YouTube and my membership which we'll talk about a little bit later. Hello Tazzy, hello Sydney, oh sorry one hour from Sydney, oh New Zealand we've got an international, hello Amanda. Excited to have a few of you on here, I'm just going to have a quick drink. <clears throat> I of course am now a little bit flustered after all our issues, but hopefully everyone can get back on again. So I'm going to move my Canberra, very good, very multicultural. I am excited. Okay, so today we are making the Everyday Overalls. Uh, it is one of my favourites. I, well, I love all Tadar patterns, but the Everyday Overalls I tested earlier, or was it earlier this year, I think it was, um, and made some for my son, Ted, and I'm making another pair now. So I made a pair earlier for my neighbour, which, of course, are behind the camera, so I can't show you. But today I'm using a really beautiful fabric from... The Tallery, which was formerly Clover & Co. It was designed by the owner, Yondette. It's called, I'm going to butcher this, but it's like Mount Atioa, Mount Atoa. Sorry, Yondette, if you're watching. Um, but that's the fabric that we're going to use. I've got some gorgeous, ta-da, labels here that we're going to use as well. Or maybe if I show it here, it would be a bit better. So made by hand. I've obviously got two cameras, so I'll have one um, featured on the sewing machine and one on my overlocker. So you won't be able to see the overlocker because I won't be doing as much on the overlocker, but you'll be able to see on the normal machine. So, oh, we got a Toowoomba there. Yeah, I know, technical issues. It's story of my life, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we're here now um what else was I gonna say I had something else that I was... oh that's right I am actually not even using my machine tonight like I've got my overlocker but I don't have my normal sewing machine because I'm having issues with um like the stitches so I quickly rang my mum and I'm like mom I'm going live tonight can you please help me but we're gonna get started so I move pretty quickly because we've got a lot to get through in an hour. So if you're sewing along with me, like you're obviously welcome to, but I dare say I'll probably end up getting ahead. Oh, we've got Hong Kong, hi Sinead. Um, so I probably will end up zooming ahead a little bit, but this is all recorded. So you will be able to go back and watch it. And if you are registered, you will be able to um, get the replay as well so I highly recommend if you haven't already registered to register um, I'm not even going to try and put that link in there right now because it's gonna muck up on me but Laura I see you're on here if you are able to Laura's one of my friends if you could pop the link in that would be great and I can pin it but otherwise I will pop it at the end but I'm not I'm not game to touch anything again so the first set we've got, I do do some things a little bit differently to the pattern, but in, in essence I will. So the first thing it talks about is we need to prepare our facings. There is a lot of ironing in this, so make sure that you do get your iron as well. I know we're not all big fans of ironing, but it really does make a big difference in this pattern. So the very first thing I'm going to, oh, thank you, Laura. It won't let me pin it. Oh. Can you all still hear me? I hope so. I hope this is working. It says there's a problem. Anyway, I'm going to keep going because I, I don't want to end up... Oh, good, you can. Good. All right. Oh, 
it's hard when I can't get feedback from people, but thank you for telling me. So I am going to, oh yeah, this is it. Yeah. Thank you, Lauren. Perfect. So if you haven't registered and you're watching now, I recommend going to register as well because it will send you the replay tomorrow morning. Uh, and also I've got a little extra gift that I'm like a little extra PDF that I'm putting in there as well. So make sure you register. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to overlock the edges of my facing pieces. So your facing pieces should look like this. This is the back and this is the front. So I'm going to overlock along the edges here. So I've got my overlocker here. <clears throat> All right, I've got one. <clears throat> And two. So this is where I do it a little bit different from the pattern. It does say to fold it up. Oh, I'm trying to, I need to do it on my iPad. Um, to fold it up and press it. However, I like to do a memory crease and I actually sew it later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to memory crease these with my iron. I'm in my PJ pants too, so sorry about that. Well, actually, sorry, not sorry. So you just fold it up about a centimetre and give it a really good press. And like I said, I do it as a memory fold for now. Okay, so now I'm going to put those pieces aside and we're going to do the pockets next so get your I'm doing the front the front patch pocket and a back patch pocket so I'm going to finish the top of these as well on my overlocker and if you've got any questions about any of the processes along the way please just pop them in the question box because I'm more than happy to answer them Okay, so we have that now. Now what we're going to do is I like to trim my stuff as well, sort of as I'm going along. I'll do it over here so you can see. So I'm trimming just my little bits. I'm just going to put them in the bin. Can everybody see okay as well? Like, do you like the setup? I tried to make it so it would be easy for everybody to see. So now we've finished the top. What we're going to do is we're going to fold this over, oh, I think it's like half an inch, so about just over a centimetre. And I'm going to sew down the sides here. Just about, what is it, a quarter of an inch, so six mil to the bottom. So here we go. I didn't actually pre-test my mum's machine, so this could be even more fun. It is the machine I learnt on though when I was a little girl, so hopefully it's not too bad. Um, Alright, and she doesn't have... You know how you get used to things? I go to like do this and... So that's one side. Oops, please don't break on me. So I've actually got a 116 uh, needle in my machine, which I probably could have got away with a 9014. Um, I did the 116 because it's I'm using the cord. I was like, oh, you know, it would be good to have it slightly heavier needle but if we're having trouble I might swap it out but we'll see so with the numbers on needles if you don't know the higher the number the thicker the fabric the lower the number the thinner the fabric so 
um, a good way to sort of think of it is like that. With the two different numbers, so that like the 90, 14, 116, they actually mean the same thing. It's just that one is an American system and one is a European system, much like our metric and um, imperial systems. So the Americans like to have it a bit different. So they have something different. All right, so I've sewn over those two tops. Now what I'm going to do is just trim these corners. And Lauren, if I'm doing anything wrong, feel free to pop that in the chat too and be like, oh, Megan, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I go a bit rogue. So I'm just trimming these corners, making sure that I don't actually trim into the stitches. And now you're going to fold it or um, turn it the other way around. And then we're going to press that. So again, on this one, and you can just use a blunt pencil or I've got a knitting needle. And we just push that out there. Push that out there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to my uh, iron and I'm going to press down the sides, all the sides and up and then we'll attach it. So I'm going to take it over to my iron. <coughs> So are there any questions so far? <clears throat> of course, I also get a frog in my throat. Very important work. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad that you're ego rogue. I mean, as you saw, I already deviated from the pattern within like the first step because I don't finish my... <clears throat> facings but I prefer finishing it later so just folding over my edges so I get a nice clean little pocket the other thing I've done with my thread is I've actually doubled it up so Lauren does give that tip in her um, instructions if you don't have top stitch thread you can Double it up. So I've got my first little pocket. And now I'll do my other one. Uh, and yeah, I didn't have any top stitch thread. So I just doubled up. I, I use Rassant thread because I like it. Um, and yeah, so you can use either doubled up thread. I tend to try and go for quality threads. I used to just buy the cheapest thread I could. But honestly, it really does make a difference to your machine, to the stitches. You know, you get less skip stitches when you're using quality threads. Um, less broken stitches when you're using quality threads. So it really is worth doing that. And I would also say that some stitches actually have like a, a life, a lifetime, like a lifespan. If you have if you have some stitches sorry some threads that you know your grandma had they may not be the best quality and they may be deteriorated so just keep that in mind so I've got my second pocket here so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch across the top here so I've got our nice little top stitch and we're going to double stitch this so I've got my stitch length set to just over three. I think when you top stitching, oh, of course I don't, I didn't grab the bobbin. Um, I've got my top stitch set to three. I like a slightly longer stitch when I'm doing a top stitch. I just think it looks nicer. So I lost my bobbin, come back. <coughs> So to double the thread, all I've done is run the thread through twice. So I'll show you, I've got um, a bobbin here loaded with my green and then my rasant and then I've just thread it. I'm just trying to make sure I've got it. And I've just got double the thread and I've put two, like two of the threads through the same needle eye. 
that is how you do it. So it's pretty, pretty simple to do. Stay there. All right, let's try that again with the... <clears throat> so using a Rasant or um, Guterman is a good thread as well. And I'll show you what I mean by it looking... It's going to bug me not having a thing. It is at the back there. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's just that little bit thicker. Like it looks... It just looks more like a top stitch thread. And it will likely become more apparent when uh, we are top stitching the rest of it. So top stitch this. So it's important when you're doing your top stitching to try and get them sort of a bit more um, parallel. So I tend to try and pick something on my machine, whether it's on my foot or on the side. But that's, that's looking really nice, actually. So that's one of my back patch pockets. It's hard to say fast. So now I'm going to do my front patch pocket. So we'll do this. I'm curious, what does everybody sew on? Do you have, like, what's your normal machine? Do you have an overlocker? What overlocker model do you have? What overlocker model would you like? Do you have a cover stitch? I went on a podcast this morning and it was interesting, like I was a guest on the podcast, and it was interesting chatting to the hosts about what they had. And they're both in America. Well, one was in America and one was in Canada. But yeah, one of the girls had a faff and a Viking, so. All right, so that is our front patch pocket. It's a bit wonky, but. Okay, it's just for Ted. Now, what I'm going to do, because Lauren has these really cute, super amazing tags, I highly, highly recommend you get some. So she's got these beautiful um, handmade, made by hand, made for play. I love these too. I'm going to make some for Ted with that. I'm not perfect and I am unique, which is one of the ones that I'm going to put on my side back pocket. Then we've got the Handmade Australia. Hello, I'm handmade. I'm actually thinking of making another pair of overalls with that on the front. And I love that it's a double entendre because it's like the garment is handmade, but the person is handmade too. So I really love that. Um, and then made with love, made to be loved. Ta-da! The ones I made before had these ta-da ones, which was really cute. Handmade, original home sewn threads, and then handmade. So if you haven't got some of these, I definitely recommend chucking those on your cart just reading back the brother lots of brothers oh janome very nice so now i want to get this in the middle so what i'm going to do is get my i'm sure i had my ruler handy here it is I'm going to see the middle, which is four inches. So I'm going to make a little mark. Oops. <clears throat> so I'm just going to use one of these friction pens, uh, which is heat activated. So I'm just going to put a tiny, tiny little mark at two inches. And then I'm going to position this. Now, a little trick if you want to make sure you're getting it really nice, because I tried to wing it earlier with my fingers earlier, and it just, it was okay, but, you know, it didn't look amazing. So, oops. <clears throat> I'm just going to use some double-sided tape. This is really thin. I actually got this from Dreamy Bag Hardware, but um, I don't know if Lauren sells it in her shop or not uh, but I know Ruby Jam do and I think the Tallery do I'm pretty sure So Unique do as well so I've got my double sided tape now I'm just going to place it in the middle what do we think looks pretty good I feel like I want it down a little bit further actually so I'll just bring it down a tiny bit And then, if I have a look, yeah, 
that'll look good. So now I can stitch this down. So I'm just going to stitch around the outside. Oh, I need to make sure that's back in the middle. Oh, this is not... So we'll go around here. And one of the things that I just really like about sewing with wovens, I mean, I love knits, but I also really love wovens because you get to do all these like really finessed stuff, you know, these really nice um, just things that you might not normally do with knits. So, I probably could have done this better, but we try. I know, isn't it amazing? So now we have our little made by hand so yeah I probably could have done that but you know what it is made by hand so that's that's what it is all right so I'm just going to trim off my threads put them in the bean again at the back and when I said I did a double um what's it called double thread before that's only on the front I haven't done that on the bobbin because I wouldn't actually know how to do that I don't think you can actually. So yeah, it's just the front threads are doubled. So we've got that and then I'll show you. So I've got my little mark here. All I need to do, put my iron on it, it's gone. So they're friction label, fri friction pens. You can get them from um, quite a few places, I think. All right, now we're going to do our front pieces. So, there are front pieces there. Now, the pattern talks about um, serging your edges and then stitching, but I just, I'm just going to overlock it all because I'm lazy. So, all I'm going to do is serge this crotch, the front, front piece. So, I mean, obviously you would normally pin this and put your clips on, but I'm a naughty girl and I just wing a lot of it. So we're going to just run this through. Plus I've been sewing for a long time, so I can get away with doing somewhat free stuff. Okay, so we've done that, and now we're going to open it up. Ta da! Haven't finished yet. Uh, and I'm just going to give this a quick press. So, in the pattern, obviously, if you had surged your edges and then stitched it, you would make sure that you press your seams to each side, but I just press the seam to one side. So, that is fine. And now we're going to top stitch down the middle. So which side did I press that to? That side, I think. So again, when top stitching, I'm just going to pick the middle of my foot and I'm going to line up the center seam with the middle of my foot and I'm going to move my needle to the side. So you probably can't see it too well, but it does, it has moved my needle to the side. And you probably notice I'm not back stitching for these because it's going to get caught in the seam at the top anyway, so I'm not worrying about it for now. But I'm now just going to go down the middle. How are we feeling so far about them? Anything that anyone's been like, oh, I don't know if I could do this or... I didn't know I could do that. Sewing really is, I mean, there's rules, but you can bend them to your will sometimes. So we've done that first side. I'm really glad I chose that green. That's really pretty. And now I'm going to go back this way. 
And all this top stitching is optional as well. So if you can't be bothered with this top stitching or you're not confident with top stitching, you don't have to do this top stitching. It just, it's a personal preference. I think it looks good, but if top stitching isn't your thing, there's no reason why you need to. It's not a rule. And yeah, so sometimes doing things like this, I just, I like doing the, the finessing things. Okay, so we finished our top stitching, and as you can see, mine is a little bit wonky, but I don't think anyone's gonna be looking that close. So now we are going to get our front pocket piece. I did mark it in there, but I must have cut it off. So we're gonna just pretend like we know where this bit is as well. And I'm going to use the double-sided tape again so that we can get it looking nice. So I'm just gonna put this to the side for the minute while I get my double-sided tape. You are, good job. Never doubt yourself. If it works out in the end, there's really, you know, just because you do something different, I obviously do the facing pieces differently. Doesn't matter. As long as I still get a working garment at the end. Does anyone else use double sided tape? You know, obviously you can use pins, but um, sometimes they're a little bit finicky or it's hard to get them right and they move on the fabric. Whereas by using double sided tape, and this one isn't wash away, but it's so tiny it doesn't matter. You can get wash away fabric tape, which I think a lot of quilters use. Um, and it literally is what it is. It washes away after you wash the garment. Oops. So you don't have to worry about it being sticky or anything. A bit. I wish I could play music while I was doing these, but I'm not allowed to. Um, Facebook would kick me off because it the bots um, can tell if you're playing music, and because music has copyright laws, it would think that I'm streaming it for like you know not not good purposes. So you just have to listen to me and the sound of my voice. Okay. See if I can, if we can see it. Yeah, here we go. All right, so I've got this here, and I'm going to get my pocket. <clears throat> and I think I like it about here. So now I just tuck all that. In. Make sure I'm happy. So these are the bits that are kind of the most finicky on the overalls, just getting these pocket bits right. What do we think? I think that looks cute. Yeah, double-sided tape is really quite, quite handy. Okay, so I've got that down. Now I'm just going to stitch it. So I'm going to double stitch this again. So I'm going to go from the outside. I am going to back stitch this bit because it's not getting caught in anything. So I'm just going to do a little back stitch. And then away. Go. So I always make sure my needle is in the down position when I'm going to lift my presser foot and turn it just so I know that I've got it in the right place. Just there's fine. Thank you, darling. Just getting a tea delivery. Thank you, Mr. So and Tell. You're amazing. <laughs> so I'm just going around here. Yeah, you've got to get those labels, Marguerite. It's so good. 
Um, Hannah, can I ask you? Is it possible to not sew two bits together in the front? Just have one whole piece with it. Okay. I think what you mean, Hannah, is can you sew can you cut it on the fold? I'm going to I'm going to um, assume that's what you mean. And the answer is no. You can't cut it on the fold. And that is because of the crotch curve. Um, and I've asked that before too, because I was like, why can't I, you know, do that? But it's because I think someone said to me, it's like we're not um, we're not 2D, we're 3D. So the only way you would be able to not like to cut it on the fold, I guess, is if they were a harem style, because then you don't need a crotch for your like crotch, I guess. I think that's basically it, isn't it, Lauren? Lauren can jump in and give more info if she's around. She might be doing kids bed as well. Um, but yeah, that is basically why you can't cut it on the fold because it, yeah, we're not, we're not 2D. I think I've messed this up. I was meant to go the other way, wasn't I? trying to do like a fancy little little bit on here I'll show you it looks a bit funky but again it's handmade so yeah cool okay yeah so I wanted to do you know how like those store-bought ones have that like I did a good one there but that one <laughs> looks a bit funky but you know what again it's made by hand so I'm just going to trim these up and I'll have a look at the questions so Robin asks, I'm wanting to sew this for my two-year-old granddaughter who's average size. Would I make a size two? Uh, I'm going to say yes, but if you can get her measurements, it is good. I made a size two for my neighbour, who is an average size two as well. Uh, I haven't tried them on her yet, but I'm going to assume they fit. So I'm pretty sure a two should fit, but you can always make them a little bit bigger and she can roll up the legs and so she can have like a bit of a cuff. Um, yep, yeah, so yeah, crotch curve. So she, um, Lauren said, yes, you spot on the crotch curves means you can't cut on the overalls, on the fold, but you can cut the pinafore version. You just have to take away the seam allowance from... The pattern piece before cutting yeah yeah so that's basically what it is but that is why you can't um have it on the fold i'm just gonna have a quick drink of my tea in my cinderella mug i should be able to see it here this is um i got this from disneyland actually And my husband hates when I use it, so I'm surprised he bought it because I only hand I only hand wash it because I'm trying to preserve it. Okay, so I'm just going to do a bit of a tidy up of all my threads. It's a good idea to do that when you've got, you know, uh, thread heavy things like this going on, just so you don't get confused. So we now have our front piece pretty much ready to go. Look how cute it looks. Just going to give this a bit more of a trim. How are we going for time? Nine, nine. We might end up going a little bit over, but that's okay. I'm happy to stay if you're happy to hang around. So we've got that. So I'm going to put that to the side for now. Now we're going to have a look. Oh, I haven't finished actually. I lied. We're going to get our front facing piece. And I didn't do it before, but I've got some interfacing. Where did I put it? had it out so I wouldn't have to look for it I had everything ready oh well, I'll get some more I thought Megan you need to be very prepared so I had everything ready and then I cancelled the live and I can't find my interfacing all right so we get our interfacing and we just get two like one inch squares and all we're doing is we're attaching some interfacing to these two corners here. And that is because whether you are doing your, if you're doing buttons or hardware, which I'm doing hardware, 
but whether you're doing buttons or hardware you should always reinforce where there's going to be like buttonholes or buttons so my metal hardware will be on these bits okay so I've got those on so now get my front bit <coughs> And I'm going to line it all up. I will clip this a little bit. So Jessica says, I bought this pattern recently and I'm trying to work out what size to make my daughter. Um, do you or anyone else know if the torso, me torso measurement is done with or without the napion? Lauren, that might be a question for you because I'm not 100% sure. I'm making a size three for my son who still wears a nappy, if that helps. And he's generally in size three clothes, but he is more of a size two in the waist. So I've pinned my front piece with the facing piece and the front piece right sides together. I'm going to sew up this side across the top and down this side. I'm leaving these, these bits open because that is where we connect it later. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly overlap this. If you don't have an overlocker you can still obviously make this pattern you would just either zigzag or if your machine does a faux cover overlock stitch you can finish off the edges it's just really important to make sure you do finish off woven edges because if you don't they can fray and it would be so disappointing if you put all this work into a garment and then your edges frayed away and you couldn't wear it, which I've had happen to me. So now I've attached that. You are supposed to clip these corners, but I'm gonna do it after. So I'm gonna put this piece aside for now. I'm gonna move on to my back piece patch pocket. Okay, I've got my back piece. I'm only doing a pocket on one side. So I'm going to put this to the side and where did, oh, I knocked something. Oh dear. Hopefully you can all still see me. Technology's not my friend. So I now have my little I am not perfect. And I'm going to trim all these threads again. So that they're not in my way. It's a really good idea to have a good sharp pair of snips at your desk just for clipping away those things. So I actually do have a free resource on my website. The top 10 sewing tools every sewist should have. I think it is quite a lengthy title. Maybe I should change that. Um, and I do talk about sort of the top 10 sewing tools that I use with nearly every project I make. So if you haven't been on my website, I recommend going and checking that out. And it's under extras and then freebies. And there's a couple of other freebie things in there to help you. And then I also have my monthly membership which is the sewing corner. So I think we have a couple of sewing corner members in here. I saw Hannah and Erin pop up before and Laura's in here too. Um, and in that group, I release a different tutorial every month that I go through in great detail. I also do a mini masterclass, which is where we build our skills up. So this month I did three ways to add pockets to any garment. So we looked at a patch pocket, an inseam pocket, and a welt pocket. So they're little mini skill builder type 
classes and then we do a main tutorial as well. So the main tutorial this month was a Sonia E-Step women's pattern. But we've done bags, we've done kids, like there's lots of different things in there. So I'm just going to lay this sort of here. I did mark earlier when I cut out my pieces where the patch pocket should go. So I'm just popping that down. Again, I've got my double-sided tape, as you would have seen. And I'm just going to place that on there. There we go. I think it's a bit crooked. This is where the double-sided tape is really good because you don't have to like take your pins out and re-stick them. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So then I'm going to get my little label, my I am not perfect one, and I'm just going to stick that on the side here. So it's going to be this cute little label coming out the side but you could also use any of those ones you could have like the i am handmade across the back patch pocket or the, one of the other made for play ones okay okay i don't think this is perfect but i'm just embodying the label so i'm going to bring this back now and i'm going to do the same that i did on the front patch pocket Again, making sure that I backstitch. And putting the needle down, turning, needle down, turning. If you are making a pair of these overalls now or you have got something ready, pop it in the comments too. Take a photo. I think you can put a photo in there. Tell me anyway. Um, I would love to see what everybody's things are. Aurora Gold, I think it was, um, shared hers earlier today and tagged me, which I was super pleased about. And when you do make your overalls, make sure you tag me and ta -da. We love to see them. I know Lauren loves seeing things that customers make with her patterns. And I love seeing things that people make and get value from. You know, if, if I've helped you, I love to know. So if you can put a photo in, I don't know if lives allow you to do photos or not. Oh, Sherilyn, exciting. Hopefully you are getting some value, Sherilyn. Where did you say you were from? I can't remember, was it the one that was about an hour from Sydney? Um, I've gone blank. Okay, it won't allow photo of lives. Oh, well, <clears throat> you'll just have to show me later. Yes, please do. Okay, so we've got our second pocket with a little I am perfect label. Again, people, you need to get these labels because they are so damn cute. Uh, where were they? Like, you could, I reckon I probably should have also like done a little hello, I'm handmade. I haven't even opened these yet. <clears throat> Yeah, like a little hello I'm handmade on your back pockets pretty cute but yeah definitely get some of these oh good it's nice Brisbane Brisbane for Sherilyn and Emma is cutting her pattern out what fabric are you using Emma I would love to know feel free to also share your favorite fabric places oh would you look what I did I'm so clever that I've stitched that. Let's just see that everybody 
is not perfect. Even people <clears throat> who sew all the time, I was too busy talking. Nothing like a little bit of a hiccup. That's my third thing. So I'm good now. <clears throat> the first thing was stopping the video. The second thing was missing my um, interfacing that I pre-cut. And now I've cut, I've stitched my, my strap to my pocket. This is just what makes it fun, isn't it? Right. And in the sewing corner, oh, Monica's in the sewing corner. Hello, Monica. Um, I edit this stuff out. So if I do make a whoopsie, you don't have to see it. But I also think it's good to see other people make mistakes because it shows, one, that we're all human, and two, that mistakes happen. Like, no one's perfect. No one gets it right 100% of the time. It's just what makes things unique. Actually, it's quite fitting that the label I used was I am not perfect. <laughs> Considering that I am not perfect. Okay, I'm nearly finished. <clears throat> Another thing I will say is in my tools guide, <clears throat> excuse me, is a good unpicker. There's nothing more annoying when you have um, an unpicker that's blunt and you're trying to unpick stuff. Like, it really is worth getting a decent unpicker. Okay, take two. So I'm just going to re-sew this. My bits are out of the way, thank gosh. Just marry it up with that. <clears throat> and we'll do the other side as well. And then we can move on. Okay. <laughs> that is when I go to bed. Well... I think if I went to bed, you'd all be a bit sad that I didn't finish them. So that's okay. We have rectified our mistake or my mistake and no one's really going to notice. I will notice and you will all notice, but it's our little secret. Okay. So. Oh, oh, Emma, okay. you're cutting it out. All right. That is where you need a projector. Projectors are life. If anyone has any questions about projectors, I am happy to answer them. Now we need to add our strap pieces. <clears throat> so as we mentioned earlier, uh, well, as I mentioned earlier, I did actually cut out my pattern pieces before we started just because I knew we were going to be pushed for time. So I'm just going to sew across. Oh, sorry, you can't see. So across the top of here. Um, so I did pre-cut all my pattern pieces, but I it probably took me 20 minutes, 25 minutes, um, because my projector is just so incredible. If you haven't got one, I highly recommend looking into it. They are a game changer in terms of like not having to print and cut and stick and sew and do all those things. Okay, so I've put my, I've got my two straps connected. Now I'm going to put my two back pieces right sides together. And I'm going to sew or overlock. I'll put a couple of pin clips in. Are we team clips or team pins? I use a mix of both, but predominantly I like clips. Um, you can get secondhand 
projectors, like my first one I got the ultra short through for 250 second hand online. All right, so I'm going to sew or overlock my back curve. What have we got? Pins, clips, pins on woven, clips on knit. Pins. Starting with your projector, Shannon, how good is it? Like, so good. So I have sewn that together and I'm going to press that to the side again because we're going to top stitch again. for another tea sip of my tea tea I'm a clipper except for adding pockets and collars in place yeah I really only pin when I'm doing neckbands so I'll show you my projector I'll see if I can flip it around um, so mine's actually on the roof so that is my projector and I it projects onto a mirror and it comes down onto my cutting table and I have a, a O capability so I can project like full adult pant legs and see everything which is very handy so the mirror setup took a bit it was quite um, involved my husband helped me with that but <clears throat> you don't have to have a ceiling mount or if you do it just depends on the length like the area you have from your roof the distance but you can get ultra short throws as well so now that I've sewn that together or searched that together I'm going to top stitch again down the side so I'm just going to put my needle all the way to the right I'm lining up my center seam with the center of my foot and away I go so yeah the mirror mount is quite a detailed and involved process and obviously it means you need a dedicated cutting space which I took over my son's room sorry Ted um, but the ultra short through you don't need a ceiling mount or a ceiling um, a mirror or anything you can just have it on your table or you know mounted to um, uh, I've seen a lot of people use TV stands all right so that's one let's do the other side TV stands are quite good. Uh, Franilyn Daily from Daily Sews and Stuff has a good video on it as well. Just doing our top stitching. Okay, that's that. Kim asks, if your overlocker stitch with the same as the suggested seam allowance? More or less. So I think my overlocker is set to seven mil, seven and a half mil, and I trim off a tiny bit. So it would be more or less the seam allowance of one centimeter. So yes. Um, does the seam allowance change if you serge the pieces together rather than finish the edges? No, because you would be basically stitching along sort of just outside the overlocked 
finished edge. So for me, I just sort of am doing that all in one. Okay, so I've done that. I have edge stitched down. Now the next bit. So now I'm going to, I hope that makes sense, Shannon. Does that make sense? I don't know if Lauren does it the same, like her pattern states that you're supposed to finish the edges and then overlock, but I'm an old girl. The other thing I could have done was use my accolade. I've got an accolade baby lock at the moment, which is on loan from baby lock. And that is actually, actually has a six stitch safety stitch. So you can basically sew and overlock at the same time. So it has a safety stitch that sits uh, sort of here and it overlocks at the same time. So yeah, you can get a baby lock or, or a combo machine. I think most combo machines do do the safety stitch, but I'm a fan of baby lock. I can't deny. I am the, uh, I will be transparent and say I am the ambassador for baby locks. So, you know, I promote them because I'm the ambassador. But I was actually saying on the podcast today, it's hard because I actually would have bought, I bought my cover stitch, which was a $4,000 machine. And then I was gifted my overlocker, which is also a $4,000 machine. But it was a machine that I was going to buy anyway. It's just that I didn't have the funds at the time. So when I was offered to get it, I wasn't going to say no. Uh, but Baby Lock are a company I would recommend regardless because they are just such incredible machines. So Tiani said, I tuned in this finish set. What, may I please ask what gap you did between the top stitching on the pockets? Oh, um, mine are terrible looking for three mil. What did I do? I kind of wing it. I'm a wing it kind of girl. So mine are probably about five mil, so half a, half a centimetre. And I'm pretty happy with that. So, yeah, you can always practice. It's always good to practice doing your bits first. Now this is where I'm going to have a bit of trouble because I don't like to <laughs> stitch this bit, but you have to stitch obviously down the V bit, otherwise you can't get a nice V. So I'm going to, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to clip these bits first. And I'm going to stitch probably about an inch above on each side and come down to a V and then I'm going to overlock the rest because I just think it is a nicer finish. Is that what you do Lauren? I guess you probably do as it says because in the pattern I do know it says it's yeah it says to clip into all the corners so that you get a nice turnout. So if you do decide to stitch the whole thing, you definitely need to do that so that you get a nice turn. Like you, when it turns out, it sits nice and flat. But when you do it with the overlocker, you don't need to do that. So, all right. Christine, I haven't started mine yet. Uh, if you're making overalls with corduroy, would you do a facing in corduroy or is it too bulky for the hardware? No, I do. Mine is all corduroy and I've done the facing in the corduroy and you'll see when I get to the hardware, it's fine uh, because otherwise you will see the bottoms of the straps. So I'm coming down and where's my, I just want to try and get it. So what I'm doing is I'm just feeling for the seam because I want to try and do my V right there. Yeah, Lauren says I do exactly as the pattern. 
I know. I'm a naughty, naughty girl. So everybody watching, be like Lauren. <laughs> Don't be like me. And then I'm coming up this side about an inch. And then, okay. Okay, so Monica's, I'm enjoying seeing your process. Um, I'm naughty because I jump all over the place by overlooking pieces, eyeing different steps at the same time and swinging bulk. I mean, there's no right or wrong process, really, as long as it looks the same at the end and it doesn't fall apart, I kind of think, you know. There's so many different ways that you can put a T-shirt together. Um, some people do it one way, others do it another. It really is just how your process works, I think. Unless there's, a, like, something specific about the way it can... Um, constructed that you need to do it the way it's said okay Lauren says if it's really thick corduroy you can do a thinner facing I've done that before with both cord and denim overalls so in the tester group because I tested it as well I did mine in a denim and I really struggled however I do think what happened Lauren was I didn't do didn't follow the pattern <laughs> surprise surprise and what happened was I actually surged across the top of my straps which you're not supposed to do so I really struggled to push it all back down which you'll see in a minute but you're not supposed to surge or sew across the top of your straps so you need to leave them open so I'm just going to do this next bit using a different foot and I don't like it. Okay. All right. All right, there we go. Sorry, I'm just concentrating for a little bit. Come to my V. Um, Christine says I've done both ways and it turned out beautifully. Monica says I'm using a navy cotton as a lining because my navy cord's really thick. And then um, I used cord and I've used a gingham facing. Oh, that would be very nice, Rhonda. So this is. So I've overlocked and kind of come into where my V is. So now I'm going to do the other side. Done this, we're actually not too far off finishing them. Dropping everything. Okay. Okay. So We're still live, aren't we? It just told me that something was deleted. That's awkward. So now I've done this. I'm going to trim up my little pieces. Trim all my bits. And now I'm going to clip into my V. So very important to clip up to the stitches but not through and this is how you get a really nice crisp V and now I you can either use dropping everything 
You can either use a pin or I sometimes use this Duvalucky thing here. And what you do, is you load it up. And then you put that there. And then you push it back on itself. So this is probably one of the trickiest bits, I reckon. Well, not tricky, just fiddly. So Hannah's asked, would you sew over your overlocking to not let any overlocking threads show through? I'm not sure, ouch, I'm not sure I quite understand what you mean. <laughs> These are from Amazon. Um, they're really good for scrunchies as well, actually. So, let's keep going, just a little, little, little bit, otherwise you can use a pin, let's see, can I see it yet? So now I can take these out. Okay. So. Hannah said, this looks fabulous. I think I'll have to purchase this pattern and give it a go. Appreciate all the hips, hints, helpful tips. I'm only half watched. Yeah, two tips. Uh, Rewatch, great. I'm so glad you liked it, Hannah. Make sure you've, um, if you haven't, make sure you go and do the registration link so you, you get that too. Hannah, when you pull your seam apart, um, sometimes you see you still see the stitching. Yeah, I still, I'm not quite sure I understand. <laughs> Tiani said, I'm a cheater. I sew the ends, clip the corners and turn. <sighs> yeah, I struggle with that though. So can you see any major difference or benefit of doing it the right thing by the pattern? Look, I think it's a neater finish when you do it the way you're talking about, Tiani. But it really depends on what fabric you use. Like I said, with the um, denim I used, it took me like 40 minutes, I reckon, to try and turn those straps. And I was getting so frustrated by it. So I think if you're using a woven, like a cotton poplin or even a thinner drill or maybe a thinner canvas you might be able to get away with it but if I tried to do that with this cord I think I'd just be in a world of pain okay like teeth showing through let me finish this and I'll see if I can understand I'm assuming the finish from the baby look is so great you don't need to sew over it. Are you talking about like when you pull it apart like this? Because you do still see some stitching. And then that's down there. So I will always, well I often will change out my left needle on my overlocker to match, yeah okay, to match the fabric that I'm using. So I've changed that out to like an eggshell ivory so that it doesn't, you can't see it. But the pair I made earlier was a purple, so I changed my left needle out to a purple. It's just a cheater way of kind of getting a nicer finish. So I've turned my straps out, so now I'm going to give them a really good press. Um, Sherilyn says if your thread is a light colour you won't see the thread. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I often will change out my left needle. All right. So I'm giving this a really good press.
And I'm not a big fan of pressing, but I tell you, sometimes it really does make a big difference when you press something, especially for wovens. given that a good press the other thing I guess I will say when you do it Lauren's way and maybe she can attest to this you might not have as quite bulky seams when you're just using the sewing like my straps are quite bulky because I've got the overlocked seams in there I'm not I'm, like I'm not upset about it it's not it's not an issue but yeah that might help reduce the the seams so now we're just going to push in those little ends and top stitch. So get that ready. Yeah, I just think it might it might affect the strap a little bit. But maybe not so much that it makes a narrower strap, it just would depend on how you like how much you chop off when you're overlocking, but maybe less bulky when you don't overlock the seams. I don't know, I always overlocked them, so Anna asked may I ask what brand your iron is? You may, but I can't tell you because I don't know. <laughs> I was actually gifted that iron from a friend whose mum had passed away and she had that iron. So he was like, oh, I don't know what to do with it. Like, would you like it? And I was like, okay. And anyway, it sat in my cupboard for probably a year because I didn't have the space and I didn't know what to do with it. But then I eventually got it out and now I use it because it really does give a nice crisp iron. But I don't know what brand it is. Okay, now we're joining the front and back together. So this is where the non, like where I've deviated from the pattern comes in. So what we're doing, push this to the side, get some room, make sure I can still see. So we've got our, oh, we've got, yeah. So we've got our front piece laying right side up, but with our facing pieces out. And then we've got our back piece laying right side down. So we've got our right sides together and we fold up our facing pieces. And I always start at the seam. So what I'm gonna do is match my seams here and I do, I lay them one each way. I'm gonna put a clip in and I'm going to do the same on the other side. I probably should have clipped these threads. Like that. And do the same on this side. Put a clip in. And then we match those up so they are matched as well. This side's a little bit Bit, um, bigger than the other but that's fine and now what we're gonna do stuff going everywhere got more threads from when I stuck that before so now what we're gonna do is pin or clip down our legs so I'll just put a couple in on both sides and we're going to overlock or so can't remember what Lauren says let's read the pattern she just says so but I'm going to overlock down our side edges 
and then we'll do the crotch. So I'm going to sew from here all the way down to here on both sides. And then we don't have too much more to go. Other side. So I've sewed down both my sides. Now I'm going to do my crotch. So make sure you don't sew your straps. I'm going to tuck them in before I make another mistake. The straps will be the death of me. I'm going to match up my crotch seam and clip it. Now I'm not going to pin this. I'm going to just sew down here and down the other side. Get all my threads out of the way. done yay so now this is why I do it different so if you had it done it the way it was before this would already be folded up and you would need to secure the ends of your surged or overlocked seams whereas this way now I refold along my memory crease and it will all be enclosed so now I'm going to just sew around this, bring everything back, and you'll see what I mean. We're still here, we're still awake. Don't have too much longer. So now this is our inside facing. So I just think it's a nicer finish. Like I think it's a neater finish. I like it. So now I'm going to clip my little corners and 
turn them out. You can use a blunt pencil or a knitting needle. Like so. looking cute. So I'll hold it up to this camera. Looking good. Okay. Gianni said, is it true that if I'm using a four thread overlock that I don't need to pre-sew the seam with the sewing machine or is that a myth? Um, I never tried it so I was always double sewing my wovens. <laughs> it is one good thing about being in WA, it's still early. Look, I think I was actually talking to Kate from So Into Overlocking about this not that long ago. So I'm just looking, we're now going to top stitch all the way around the top. So we're top stitching all the way around. Actually, it will give it a good press. So the with the double stitching, a lot of that rule was when, um, back when overlockers first came out, they were generally a three thread machine. So you really needed that extra stitch for security. These days it is more common to have a four thread machine. So I would say it's not as important or not as necessary. However, you still will get some diehards who, you know, swear that you need to make sure you do your safety stitch. Um, that's where it can be good to have the combo machines because you can do the six thread safety stitch. But if you ask me, I'm happy with a four thread. Um, but yeah, that's my opinion anyway. All right, so now we're going to, does that answer your question, Tiani? Probably not, gave a bit cryptic. So now I'm going to start stitching from here. Back stitch. I'm hoping I've got enough here. I should make it with my double stitching. I was envisioning that I had I would run out of bobbin, like the second stitch. Okay, so let's go around this. top stitching it's nice if you take time so Tiani said thank you you know it does I sew my knits purely on my overlocker so I never have totally understood sewing a straight stitch following by an overlocker with your knits you don't need to do it definitely not with your knits um, because a straight stitch won't work like it won't give you any security in your knits anyway so I definitely wouldn't worry about doing a safety stitch on your knits. It's really only with wovens. Um, and yeah, like I said, it it dates back from what I understand and have been told to when overlockers were predominantly three thread machines. So it was advisable to have that extra stitch for safety. but it's not as necessary today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, Karen said, yeah, also children go out of outfits, so what's the point, basically? Okay. So, go down. So, as you can see, 
like the top stitching does take a bit of time but it will be very worth it Really glad I changed machines too for my mum's because I just was getting very frustrated at my machine doing its weird stitching. back to the start now um, Rachel says what size is the page sewing tonight a size 3 for my son Ted Ted okay I'm not going to do a double stitch on this it does suggest optional in the pattern but I actually am pretty happy with just a single top stitch layer they look so good I'm super, super happy with these. So now all I need to do is my hems on my legs. Oops. So I will trim that. And all I'm going to do, I think I'm supposed to double and double it. Let me check. Um, oh, was I supposed to? I don't think I was meant to sew the middle bit yet. For sure, yeah. I skipped a bit. I did that a bit earlier. Anyway, uh, I am now going to overlock around the ends and then I'll hold up. Emma says, could you top stitch with the twin needle? Yes, you could. And I actually did that on my pair earlier and I was planning to do that tonight. However, I had all that trouble with my machine that I just thought, you know what? I'm just gonna do it all single stitching because then I have more control. And when I was swapping over to use mum's machine, I just thought I haven't tested the machine. Like I knew it would be fine, but I just thought, you know what? I'm just gonna do it all single stitch. But yes, you can top stitch with a twin needle. Uh, the thing I would note would be to make sure you understand your settings on your machine with a twin needle. Twin needles are notorious for tunneling. It's worse with knits, but it can still happen with wovens. So tunneling is when it does like a little raised tunnel, basically. So I've just overlocked those. So now I'm going to fold them up. I don't measure because I'm not a heel. And then I'm going to press and sew that. Karen says you could top stitch with cover, cover stitch. Yes, you can. And can you turn corners with twin needles? Yes, it is just a bit tricky. There's a lot more... Like you've got to kind of like bring the needle down and then um, bring it up and check where you're going to be turning like it's you can do it but like I said it just it's personal preference really if you can be bothered okay so I will just do this Jane said thank you picked up a number of tips hopefully get time to make a pair for my granddaughter I'll send a pic of the finished project Michelle thank you Michelle I would really love to see it. Michelle was in the sewing corner too. Nice to see a few faces in here. Okay. So let's do my hem. And the last thing we need to do is the overall is the hardware. Okay. 
last one. Just trim all of this. I think I'm going to make Ted a long sleeve. Oh, look at that. That's pretty good. I love good matching crotch. Um, long sleeve tee. So I might make one of the baby basics long sleeve tees for him to go with this. Probably in the Tallery River. So now all we need to do, put this to the side. Oh, please don't knock over water. Yes. Oh, do you know, I had uh, one of my labels here to put in. I was gonna put it in the side, so I remembered the size, but I forgot. So I'm actually going to, this is one of my labels, so I just have little so and tell. I'm going to put it at the back and I'm just going to put it here. There we go. Uh, Emma has asked, is this pattern for Warriors only or could you work it for knits as well? You could do it for knits. I would probably just suggest to size down. If Lauren is still on, she can probably speak to that. But yeah, you can sort of cross, like you can do wovens as knits. It's just generally you should size down because obviously it's stretchy. All right, so I've got my label in there. So now I can put my size in. Okay, let's have a little look-see. So now we're going to do our hardware. And... I'm trying to decide, should I do antique brass or silver? And if you have, again, if you haven't got yourself some, um, what are these called? Overall kits from Ta-da, definitely do. I think I'm gonna do antique brass. That's the antique brass. Oops. These are the silver. Yeah, I think the antique brass goes better, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm going to do the antique brass. So, Neil. To get that ready, I'm going to grab a tailor's awl, which is a little sharp bit like that. And I'm going to pre-mark my hole. I'm going to do about there. And then I'm going to put that through. Ow. I want to roll tonight. And then I kind of push the cap on a little bit. And then. I think you're supposed to do this in an anvil, but anyway. Sit that there. I also hammered my nail earlier today, which was not fun, but. You live and learn. So this is why we put our interfacing in earlier. Oh, that changed my... <laughs> it moved 
my thing, um, to give it extra stability. So we got that. So there's our first button. I probably bit it, bit it a bit too much in the corner, but that's okay. Let's try here. We'll do this one. Turn on. Oops. Okay. So I've got that there. Finger out of the way. Buttons. How good do they look? So now all you need to do is put your hardware on. So I know Lauren shared a pretty cool video about how to put your hardware on. I'm going to try and remember. So you put your strap through. Yeah. I want that. At the, I want this one at the top here. So you go your strap through, then you feed it down on the other side of the bar, leave a bit of a hook or a bit of a loop. Then you get your strap and you put it through like so. So they'll sit down like that. And then this goes back up on this side of the bar whoops through here oh, what have I done I did it earlier go through and then back up you need to make sure you've got your little loop so you've got enough to thread it through back up through here and then back through the other side ta-da now I know Lauren then sews that bit down there I don't always do that and I'm not doing it tonight so I'm just going to because I want to check it on Ted first before I do that so that is my first strap so let's just do the other one so again we go up and then down, making sure you leave a loop. Get your um, clip thing through there. Back up through the same side. side like so and we have our second strap done look how cute they are that is our overalls all done with our little I'm not perfect on the back now handmade so if you're still with us thank you I'm just going to bring us to the end slide thank you so much for sticking around I know it's been quite a long one I think we've been going for nearly an hour 45 um, but I really appreciate you all hanging around I hope you really got a lot of value 
they are super super cute i'm really happy with how these look i can't wait for ted to wear them and like i said i've got that cute little handmade and we've got our little i'm not perfect and then i added a label on the inside as well so i know what size it is so if you got value I'd love if you shared all your makes on um, social media and tagged me. And with my sewing corner, which I have mentioned a little bit about, it is a membership that I release monthly patterns on with tutorials. Plus we have a private Facebook group. There is um, support, like you can ask questions in there and get my support. I'm going to be introducing some Ask Me Anything or Hot Seat style Zoom sessions as well. So you can uh, submit a question, you know, if you're having trouble with the ta-da. Over a day, over all, you could say, look, I'm having trouble with step six, you know, doing this. And then we would go on the Zoom and I would take you through the step in person. I'd have stuff set up so that I can show you on my machine. And it just really, you know, um, I'm really about trying to teach others. So the promotion that I am offering everybody that has been on the live is if you use the code TADA every day, you can get the special offer of $10 off for every month of the first three months when you join the Sewing Corner on a three month membership. So instead of it being $89, it comes down to $69, no, $59. I'm really good at maths um, and it's just a great way I I like to do it with the three months so you can really get good understanding of what happens in the sewing corner and really get the value from the tutorials so if you want to check that out I have pinned it on the pinned post as well although I don't know maybe you can only pin one comment at a time but I'll have it in the um, you'll get an email tomorrow with the replay that has the special offer as well but you can have a look at my website, sewandtell.com.au forward slash the sewing corner, has all the information. And thank you so much to Tada and Lauren for allowing me to come live in the group. Looks like you have all had a good time. I'm just reading some of the um, comments. Thank you. I'm so glad that you all found value. I really just love sharing. So if you've got any questions, you can shoot me a DM. Uh, my favorite platform is instagram but i do hang out on facebook as well so feel free to uh, connect with me otherwise i hope that you all have a lovely evening remember to follow along on all my socials so you can tag me and i'm sure i will see you around good night everybody